podcast, Jesus Today. This is a devotional, or a, yeah, a short devotional that will focus on what Jesus is doing today and what the Father is doing today in our lives, in the future, and in society. And today's devotional is going to be called, We Are Not Coming from Monkeys, I Am a Child of God. We are not coming from monkeys, I am a child of God. So many people in the world today, <clears throat> so many people in the world today do not know where they're coming from. They do not know where they originate, who created them, and why they're here. It's so sad, because the, when you don't know how valuable you are, you often look down upon yourself. And that's what we see in the world today. We look down upon ourselves and we look down upon our neighbors. And we do things that are disgusting that we would not do if we knew who our father was and what kingdom we were coming from. And because we don't know that, a theory like evolution comes into the world that basically teaches us that we, we're, we are developed from a fish and that the strongest survive, which is not even true, because it's not the strongest that survive. I could be very strong, I would be like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I don't know about I'm going to die tomorrow. You don't know either. You could be hit by a car and be strong and die instantly. You could get a heart attack. You do not know when you are going to die. Diego Maradona, who was a very famous soccer player in Argentina in 1986, suddenly died. Suddenly died. So we don't know when we are going leaving this world. And the, the thing is, if we really were developing ourselves over millions of years, don't you think we would try to protect what we have a little bit more and try to live longer? But that's not the case. When you die, you lose everything, including the family. And this is the most odd thing about everything. If the evolution theory is correct, how is it that a mom can be happy to get a child? How is it that she can be so joyful over having a child when she knows, or the computer would know if it was a developed machine, that she's going to lose that child? And she doesn't even know when. It could be tomorrow. It's never calculated in her mind that tomorrow that child could die. Tomorrow she could die. And she would lose the one, her husband or the children that she loved the most. The reason that she is not sad is because it's only her body her physical body that can die. God created us. He actually created us. He made an agreement before no anybody was created that we would be created in his likeness, in his image. We would be like our Father in heaven who is eternal. And that is the reason why that you are not sad. When you marry your, your girlfriend or when you get children, you are happy. Because your spirit, your eternal spirit, has been basically programmed, if I could say it like that, by the, your father, that you will live forever. The problem is that Adam and Eve, our forefathers, the first people on earth, they decided to eat of a tree that would give them the knowledge of good and evil. They might have thought they would become like God because that's what, what the snake said, but that was not the truth. They would never become like God. Nobody can be so powerful as God. And they were his children. But they would get the knowledge between good and evil, which means they would be the judge over everything. They would were able to say, no, we don't trust that you, God, has the best for us. We want to be our own God and be the judge over everything in this world. And they chose that, and that was very stupid, because then they became the judge of all the evil forces that already before they were created had rebelled against God. And these forces, these evil forces exist today. 
And they have three goals in this order. Jesus told us in John 10, to steal, kill, and destroy. Exactly in that order. And it is so interesting to see that we are falling for this. Every human being on earth wants love. Believe me, everybody wants love. They want love. They want peace. They want to be loved. But because the evil forces are here, they're speaking into our mind. They are attacking our physical body. So anger, resentment, selfishness comes into our life and we hurt each other. Because we are thinking more about ourselves than what we should really be thinking of, our father and the family we are coming from. Let me read to you what God has given us. It says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, And he raised us up together with him, that's the Father, and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly atmosphere, by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. He did that, that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor in his kindness and goodness of heart towards us in Jesus Christ. Basically, what this is saying is, God has given us everything he has, the most precious he had, Jesus, and he has been taking us and sitting us with Jesus. And the only reason we are here on earth is to demonstrate that we want to belong to him. That is the only reason why we are here on earth. And that is why evolution does not fit into anything. No, it's not the strongest that survive. We see that many, many times. The strong actors and everybody, they suddenly die and we are very sad about it. Um, we just had Martin Luther King Day. How, wow, did he change the world? He did. And suddenly he was shot. He didn't know. He didn't know the day before that he would get shot. And now he's gone. He's gone. He doesn't have any influence anymore on this world. I mean, his his story does, but he himself is gone. So that's not true. It's the strongest that survive. No, the one who survives, as we are reading here, is the one that knows where he's coming from. That he's just passing through this world and that his father is God in heaven. And Jesus made that clear because Jesus still lived. And he died on the cross 2,000 years ago to take our punishment, was number one. Took our punishment for all the wrongdoings we have done. And he carried them on the cross. We see that in Isaiah 53, chapter 53. He was punished for our wrongdoing. But that was not the only thing. He was raised from the dead from the Father. He defeated death. He was a human being, but he defeated death because he took our punishment. And now we can become like him. When we pray, dear God, I want to be like Jesus. I know I do mistakes, I know I do wrongdoings, but please forgive me and help me to give me power to live the life you want, because when I get to heaven, I want to be like Jesus, and I want to be like Jesus here on earth. When we pray that prayer, we become born again. What does that mean? It means that I get a new life. That new life is in Jesus. I want to go away from all the evil stuff. I don't want to rebel against God anymore. I don't want to be the judge. I want God to be the judge in my life. And I want to be like Jesus. That's what it's saying. That's why it's saying in, Gal in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. I no longer live. But Christ lives within me. That's what it means to be born again. To get a new life. This life here on earth, rebelling against God, will only give us punishment. Both here on earth and when we get to heaven. In, in the spiritual world, there is no there's no Savior. And this earth is the only place where actually um, evil and good can coexist. In the, as soon as we leave this earth, that's not possible anymore. And if we have rebelled against God and haven't repented and asked Jesus to become our Savior who took our punishment and gave us the opportunity to become like Him, we will never get into heaven. No liars, 
No thieves. No, um, no, um, people that rebel. No one will get into heaven. That would not be heaven. It would just be just like here on earth. And what would God do? He's a judge. He would have to judge it. No, he can't have that into heaven. So the only way to heaven is Jesus. Is to become like Jesus. And that's why Jesus is saying in John chapter 3, we need to be born again. And that is also why Jesus is saying, don't watch all that stuff. Why can't I watch two, two men kiss uh, uh, or a man and a woman kiss in television or have sex? You can't do that because you are a royal child of God. And that is way beyond your standard. Imagine you walked into the Queen of England totally naked. You would be kicked out. That would simply... Or imagine you just walked in to your family member totally naked. They would be like, what? That's disgusting. Get some clothes on. That is basically it. This is coming from the devil. The devil wants to lower the standard to the point where he wants you to believe that you're an animal. But that's not true. You are not an animal. You are created to rule over the devil as a king. Let me just read the scriptures here from, from um, Revelation chapter 3. Chapter, oh, it's chapter 2. Chapter 2. But it's Jesus who's talking to the churches. To the one who is victorious, that's the uh, one who is who is a child of God and have a relationship with God and does my will to the end, which means has a relationship, wants to become like me, wants the Father to um, to help us to live a life as he wants. I will give authority over the nation. The one will rule them with an iron scepter. Why will we do that? Because God already made that promise before we were created that we would rule here on earth uh, and will dash them to pieces like pottery. Just as I have received uh, authority from my father, I will also give that one, the morning star, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And when it comes to the morning star, let me just give you another scripture so you understand what that means. We need to go up here a little bit. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. There is again, whoever knows the Father. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden men. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. And that is really basically what the morning star uh, means. It means having a relationship with the Father uniquely and with Jesus that you are like the morning star. The morning star is basically the scepter, the ruler, the one who is anointed. And that's what you are. We are it as a church. We are anointed and we are all going to go to heaven. But we are also going to have our personal relationship with Jesus, our Savior and the Father. So we will get a, a name and we will have a relationship. And that relationship we can always, already get now. If we ask God to give us faith, to believe that Jesus Christ is his son, and to believe that he died on the cross, took our punishment, he defeated death and was raised as a human being and became the ruler, the king of kings, and made a new life for us. How did he make a new life for me? Because when I want to become like Jesus and become a child of God, he will help me to overcome my weaknesses, even though I fell here on earth. He will help me to overcome and have a relationship with me. And when I get to heaven, I will become like Jesus. That means to be saved, because we cannot be perfect without Jesus. So we need a Savior, and that is Jesus who died on the cross. So why don't you do that today? Ask for faith to believe in Jesus Christ, and ask Jesus to come into your life, and go to church, and learn his voice, and then he will reveal himself to you, that you are a child of God, and he will show you the plan he has for your life. And you will go from the darkness um, that Adam to the light. That Jesus. <laughs>